Okay, so this is going to be a quick video over how to use domain and range uh, to either prove that two functions are inverses or to determine whether or not they are. Um, and it's not really that big of a deal, but let's go ahead and answer this question we've got posed up here. Uh, and <clears throat> what I would say to that is how we can identify functional inverses based on domain and range is that the domain of a function will be, we'll say equivalent to the range of its inverse. Okay, so the domain of a function will be equivalent to the range of its inverse, and the opposite is also true. We could also say the range right, of a function will be equivalent to the domain of its inverse. Okay, so you're probably trying to wrap your head over what I'm trying to say here. Uh, so let's look at an example. So here we see uh, f of x is equal to x squared right here in blue, this parabola. And then graphed next to it, uh, we see uh, its inverse plus or minus the square root of x. And then based on whether or not you watch the other videos or know anything about inverses, we also see they have symmetry uh, about the line y equals x, right? But that's not what we're here to talk about. Let's talk about domain and range as it pertains to determining uh, functional inverses. So we know that this guy is inverse of this guy here, right? So Let's prove that the domain of a function will be equivalent to the range of its inverse and vice versa. So what is the domain uh, of f of x? And we're going to go ahead and use parenthetical notation or interval notation, right? So we see its domain has a left bound of negative infinity, right? We continue all the way out here to negative infinity, and it has a right bound all the way out to positive infinity. Okay, and we use curve brackets because we never actually get there on either side. And then our range uh, goes from right here, lower bound of zero, to an upper bound, obviously, of positive infinity. Right? So that's a square bracket on the lower bound because we actually get there. And that's a curve bracket on the upper bound because we never actually reach infinity. Okay, so now let's look at the domain and range of its inverse. Okay, so starting with domain, we see that the left bound, right, is zero, and we see that the right bound uh, is positive infinity. And we have square and curved, right, we know the reasons. And then let's look at range. Well, our lower bound is negative infinity, and our upper bound is positive infinity. Curve brackets for both. Now, well, let's see. So the domain of f of x is equivalent to the range of its inverse, right? And the range of f of x is equivalent to the domain of its inverse. Okay, so that proves our point. And this is true for any function. Anytime you have some function f of x whose inverse is f inverse of x, like so, right? This will always, always, always be true. Okay, so that does it for this video. Uh, just to quickly recap, if a function is inverse to another one, their domain and range will be equivalent to the opposite of the other. So the domain of the function will be equal to the range of the inverse, and the range of the function will be equal to the domain of the inverse. Okay, so if you have any questions over this, uh, shoot me an email. Otherwise, you know where to find me. Goodbye.